Figured uh, it's about time I kind of showed you guys what's going on here in my garden. I've got a lot of requests. A lot of people wondering what's going on. So I figured that I would show you. Now, I was asked a while back by Charlie, what does rewilding mean to me? This to me is rewilding. Taking the land that we have and giving it back to the natural systems which we survive on, that we are a part of and cannot really detach ourselves from. I mean, we can try to, and at a certain point in time, we will uh, go extinct. But we are dependent on natural systems. Now, stones, if you look at Sepp Halzer, uh, the Austrian permaculturalist, he talks a lot about stones. Stones are important. Um, this is all my leftover stones from all the work that I've done. So if that looks like a crazy pile of craziness, that's exactly what it is. But if you think about it, in every one of those little cracks, uh, centipedes, insects, spiders, all those creepy crawlies we usually fear that uh, help the soil and help keep pests and insects in control, the natural balance of things, depend on these stones. If you flip one of these stones over, you're going to see a lot of life underneath them. And that's the point. The stones keep the water, they hold the heat, they allow for, uh, for creatures to <coughs> overwinter, and they help to keep the balance. So this is actually, I mean, we're kind of early. Our growing season hasn't started, but as you see how well this clover is doing over here. Also the alfalfa. Uh, both clover and alfalfa are legumes, and they they uh, are beautiful plants, and they help with they help with the uh, nitrogen fixing, and they also take really shitty soil and they they improve it quite a bit. They alfalfa roots very deeply, and clover has shallow roots, but um, really, if you can see, this is really dense, and if I put my hand down in there. I mean, the temperature difference is, is amazing. Midsummer, my hand down in there, it, it's going to be 20 to 30 degrees lower in midday, cooler. Keeps that, that soil cool, keeps the microorganisms happy, keeps them breeding, uh, increasing their numbers exponentially, and really helps turn nasty clay soil into something usable. <coughs> Those are my dogs chasing a bee. Hey, leave it. Ah, man, my crazy dogs. They're just having to get used to this uh, natural environment I'm creating back here. So, um, one of the things that I've done that has made this so successful and grow so much earlier is the fact that I have scarred the landscape. This is not level by any means. And as you can see over here, this is what I've just put in this. Actually, I put in at the end of last year. There's a little bit of plants growing, a little bit of alfalfa and clover um, growing here. And then these were actually, this was flat last year, and I put the uh, clover and the alfalfa on it. And then I, I mounted up and scarred the landscape because over here works so well. I didn't have to water it. It just kind of did its own thing. I mean, like I said, this is rewilding to me. Uh, you shouldn't have to water your plants. If you're watering your plants, then, then you're obviously not letting your plants do what they need to do to survive. The plants know how to maintain themselves. It's the soil um, that you can really help. Uh, along now the soil will, will take care of itself too, but we can speed that process up quite significantly So as you can see This is not flat By any means hills and valleys peaks and low points Let's see you got Part where water collects now the water doesn't stay for very long like I'm not creating ponds here. I'm creating uh there's you know five ten gallons of water that will that will go in there and absorb when it rains that's what i want i want to catch the water i don't want the water to leave i want it to stay here water is is the key i've also used the stones oh, there's my dog got molly uh, oh. mm, see 
how I put the stones up as well. And the stones are going to be a very important part of this garden. And here's my compost bin. Everyone needs a compost bin. Okay. You do not want to get rid of what people would call waste. Gardens don't make waste. There's no waste in nature. It's all food. It just depends on who's going to eat it. All right. So now I'm going to bring you into the, the main garden. Now this, this is where I grow my tomatoes, peppers, mint, parsley, carrots, onions. Um, and I grow them very dense together. If you look at natural systems, you will never find something on its own. There's no isolation in, in nature. I, mean, I guess there might be, you'd call it a desert, but I'll tell you what, if you go out in a desert and look close enough, you're going to find a lot of life and a lot of life working together. So I got my teepee where I can grow beans or nasturtiums. Got a little bit of, let's see here. I need to clean up that leftover parsley, but the parsley came back. Uh, the onions came back. I got onions like mad. Let's see. These onions are doing great and they're gonna be tasty. Tell you what, growing your own onions is fantastic way to go. They taste so much better. So, what I did earlier today is I came around and I dug this trench. See, the grass wants to go into the garden and I don't want to, I don't want that. So I create a trench all, all the way around. This also helps to collect water. Like I said, scar your landscape. Scar it. It's very helpful. And the grass itself is almost scarred as well because the stones create uneven layers. What we want is to catch the rain. Now my lawn is very flat and that's why I'm able to do this. If I had a low spot and I did this, I'd create a swimming pool and I don't want to do that. So if you have low spots, don't do it this way. See, I raise the sides up to catch the water as we go along. See, that berm is going to be very helpful to me. I got some raspberries starting here. And that's not quite time to mulch. You want to make sure it's wet and warm before you mulch. Otherwise, you're locking out what you need. All right. Before I run out of time here on my memory card, I'll show you a few more things I've done. Planted a tree. Uh, this is going to help add some shade. I've created another rock wall. It's going to be another place I can grow. And I put in this fruit tree bed. I guess I shouldn't turn my camera sideways. Got an apple. Got five different types of pears. Almonds with beautiful pink blossoms. And look at that. How neat is that? It's a nectarine. Let me give you a full view. This used to be just a flat lawn that looked like crap. And it's coming together quite nicely. Still got a lot more work to do. Hmm. Gotta finish up that side. See that? Scar your landscape. <laughs> Alright guys. See you later.